Phil Linnett was born in Hallam Hospital in West Bromwich, England. His mother Philomena Linnett was born in Dublin, and his father Cecil Paris was from Georgetown, British Guiana. Philomena met Paris who had moved to England to seek work in Birmingham in 1948, and they were in a relationship for a few months, until Paris was transferred to London. Shortly afterwards Philomena found she was pregnant, and after Linnet was born, she moved with her baby to a home for unmarried mothers in Selly Park, where he was baptized on the 4th of September. Philomena subsequently moved to Manchester but stayed in touch with Paris who helped pay towards his son's support, she subsequently had two more children who were placed for adoption. Linnet believed he was different from his peers at school, but didn't suffer any major racist attacks. Linnet first attended school in Mossside, Manchester, in 1957 due to accounts of racism and Linnet being mixed race. His mother sent him to live with his grandparents Frank and Sarah Linnet in Crumlin, Dublin. The move was important, as the presence of Frank gave him a father figure for the first time in his life. His mother stayed in Manchester and remained close to her son. She later took over the management of the Clifton Grange Hotel in Wally Range with her partner Dennis Keeley. The hotel nicknamed The Biz became popular with show business entertainers and was later referred to in a song on Thin Lizzy's debut album. Linnet had a happy childhood growing up in Dublin and was a popular character at school. Linnet was introduced to music through his uncle Timothy's record collection and became influenced by Motown and the Mamas and the Papas. He joined his first band the Black Eagles in 1965 as a lead singer playing popular covers in local clubs around Dublin. He attended the Christian Brothers School in Crumlin, where he became friends with Brian Downey, who was later persuaded to join the band from the Liffey Beats. The group fell apart due to the lack of interest of manager Joe Smith, particularly after the departure of his two sons, guitarists Danny and Frankie. Linnet then left the family home and moved into a flat in Clontarf where he briefly joined the group Kama Sutra. It was in this band that he learned his frontman skills and worked out how to interact with an audience. In early 1968 he teamed up with bassist Brendan Brush Shields to form Skid Row. Downey was not interested in Shields' request to be the drummer, so the job went to Noel Bridgman. The band signed a deal with Ted Carroll, who would later go on to manage Thin Lizzy and played a variety of covers including Eight Miles High, Hey Jude, and several numbers by Jimi Hendrix. Towards the end of 1969 Linnet and Downey were introduced to guitarist Eric Bell via founding member of them keyboardist Eric Rickson. Deciding that Bell was a better guitarist, and with Linnet now confident enough to play bass himself, the four formed Thin Lizzy. The name came from the character Tin Lizzy in the comic The Dandy, which in turn came from the nickname for the Ford Model T car. The H was deliberately added to mimic the way the word thin is pronounced in a Dublin accent. Linnet later discovered the saying attributed to Henry Ford any color you like as long as it's black which he felt was appropriate for him. Rickson was felt by the others to be surplus to requirements and left after the release of the band's first single The Farmer in July 1970. In short, towards the end of 1972, Thin Lizzy got their first major break in the UK by supporting Slade, then nearing the height of their commercial success. Inspired by Naughty Holder's top hat with mirrors, Linnet decided to attach a mirror to his bass, which he carried over to subsequent tours. On the opening night of the tour an altercation broke out between Linnet and Slade's manager Chaz Chandler, who chastised Linnet's lack of stage presence and interaction with the audience, and threatened to throw Lizzy off the tour unless things improved immediately. Linnet subsequently developed the onstage rapport and stage presence that would become familiar over the remainder of the decade. Linnet befriended Huey Lewis while Lewis Band Clover was supporting them on tour. Lewis was impressed with Linnet's frontman abilities and was inspired to perform better, eventually achieving commercial success in the 1980s. Linnet's songs including Cowboy Song and Massacre were particularly influenced by the band's US touring he had a particular affinity for Los Angeles. Having finally achieved mainstream success, Thin Lizzy embarked on several consecutive world tours. The band built on Jailbreak's success with the release of a string of hit albums including Johnny the Fox, Bad Reputation, Black Rose A Rock Legend, and the live album Live and Dangerous, which features Linnet in the foreground on the cover. However, the band was suffering from personnel changes, with Robertson being replaced temporarily by Moore in 1976, and then permanently the following year, partly due to a personal clash with Linnet. 
In 1980, though Thin Lizzy were still enjoying considerable success, Linnet launched a solo career with the album Solo in Soho, this was a top 30 UK album, and yielded two hit singles that year Dear Miss Lonely Hearts and King's Call. The latter was a tribute to Elvis Presley, and featured Mark Knopfler on guitar. His second solo venture the Philip Linnet album was a chart flop, despite the presence of the single Old Town, in 1984 he formed a new band Grand Slam with Doish Nagel, Lawrence Archer, Robbie Brennan, and Mark Stanway. The band toured the Marquee and other clubs, but suffered from being labeled a poor version of Thin Lizzy owing to the inclusion of two lead guitar players, and split up at the end of the year due to a lack of money and Linnet's increasing addiction to heroin. Linnet's last years were heavily affected by drug and alcohol dependency, leading to his collapse on 25 December 1985 at his home in Kew. He was discovered by his mother, who was not aware of his addiction to heroin. She contacted his wife Caroline, who knew about it, and immediately identified the problem as serious. After Caroline drove him to a drug clinic at Cloud's house in East Noyle near Shaftesbury, he was taken to Salisbury Infirmary where he was diagnosed as suffering from septicemia. Although he regained consciousness enough to speak to his mother, his condition worsened by the start of the new year, and he was put on a ventilator. He died of pneumonia and heart failure, due to septicemia on 4 January 1986, at the age of 36.